आज की सब्जेक्ट आप लोगों ने देखा होगा प्रेजेंट मेक एनी सेंस टू यू आज की जो टॉपिक करके आप लोगों ने टॉपिक देखा आपने आपको मिला होगा हिंदी उससे कोई आपको सेंस मिला कि इस चीज के बारे में हम बात करना चाहते हैं ये लो, ये सज्जन, ये सब लोग कौन हैं जिनके बारे में हमने टॉपिक में नाम लिया जाए एनी आइडिया और ये माइकल डी माइकल डी टू ना कर्नाटक ये भी एडिशनल इट्स ए केस ऑफ टू ट्राई कोर्ट जजेस डी डब्ल्यू देश पांडे एंड माइकल डी कुना Trial court judges means they are part of the subordinate judiciary. Michael Dekona was a district judge who was appointed the special judge to do the trial for the Jail Alita DA case. D. W. Despande was also a sessions judge who was. deported to do the trial in salman khan's hit and run case justice kumar swami is a karnataka high court judge who nullified the order of the trial court and set jail alita free ar joshi was a mumbai high court judge who set aside the trial court's judgment and made salman khan free so there is a parallel syndrome where <clears throat> both the trial judges subordinate judges have found these important personalities guilty dw despande found salman khan guilty michael dikona found jail alita guilty but the superior judges did not agree we have a three tier judiciary so it's always possible a lower court judgment will be overthrown set aside by a higher court and the district court judgment can be set aside by the high court and high court judgment can be set aside by the supreme court we saw this example in this jr case i think all of you are aware the case began soon after jayalalita finished her first term as chief minister of tamil nadu 91 to 96 Subramanian Swami was the first person who filed a case about disproportionate assets because Jayalalitha during those five years had acquired plot 1.5 lakh hectares of land across. Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, and Karnataka, and built big mansions there. So, the case 
was taken up by the rival political party leader. Rival party in Tamil Nadu was DMK. But unfortunately, as you know, when there are powerful people involved, they are in a position to delay and often subvert justice. The band of lawyers all remember, think of any famous lawyer of India, all of them came together to fight for Jailalita. After no Jailalita, this time here, two sets. One more person. The cases went on, but finally, after changes of six times, Michael Dikana became the final arbiter, final trial judge, and did a meticulous job of looking at the incomes and expenditures of Jayalalitha and the cohorts. The case was disproportionate asset case. It, what does it mean? It means you have more assets than the income. At the time when Jayalalitha had become the chief minister first time, her declared assets were worth 2 crore rupees. It was to be seen if after five years, what is the income that she has legitimately earned and what is the expenditure that she has incurred in buying the assets. The trial court came to the conclusion, what, what was the basis? Income is that Jalita, remember, in that grandiose announcement, had said she would draw a salary of one rupee. She was drawing the salary of one rupee. Then, then how this money was coming from? Where was this money coming from? <coughs> The argument that was made was that Jayalalitha had a group of, had a publication company, Jaya Publications, that made a lot of money. Argument was made that Jayalalitha had earlier before becoming the chief minister, had built a plot where C and Sasikala together had worked together to create a grape garden, and the grape garden was making a lot of money. Sasikala mentioned that for buying these plots, C had taken loans from 10 different public sector banks. And the another announcement that she made was that during her birthdays, Lot of party supporters used to give her a lot of cash money. 5 lakh, 10 lakh, 20 lakh, 50 lakh, 1 crore, depending on their work. 
So all this money together had built up this. The tribe could meticulously came to the conclusion. First, what it did, it did, it looked at all the loans that the four people, four people were accused. Jalalita, Sasitala, Sasitala's nephew and sister all four people who lived in Boy's Garden, Jalalita's house. And what did they do? The judge prepared a list of the property that had been bought between 91 and 96 and used the market rates of the period and came to a conclusion about the value of the property, value of the land. And thereafter, taking the standard measure of the construction cost, the trial judge also finalized a certain amount of payment for the construction. Then that's that looks at the expenditure. You remember Jalalita was notorious, maybe you may not remember, you, uh, you may not have been born or so you must have been small then. The, there was a huge uproar about a marriage of a century that she celebrated of a so-called nephew, adopted son, Sasitala's nephew whom she had adopted as a son and in that marriage crores of rupees were spent. And the prosecution said it was to the tune of 10 crore, which was proved. Sasikala and Jayalalita claimed it was not more than 1.5 crore expenditure. So what happened? The trial judge put together all the incomes and expenditure and then came to the conclusion that Jailalita had a disproportionate asset of more than 53 crore. It means whatever income she had, she has bought assets property which is 53 crore worth more than what the as what income she had. So on this ground, the 53 crore disproportionate asset ground, Chalarita, Shashikala and other two were convicted. And the trial court sent them to four years in jail. asked Sasitala to pay a fine of 100 crore and other three people a fine of 10 crore each. That was the time because of the conviction Jalalta had to resign. Remember the case when 91 to 96, when the 97 the case began, as I said, the powerful people, powerful lawyers, there, Kapil Sibyl and Delight, who were fighting for Jayalalita, Harish Alved, all, all of them. So naturally, she was able to delay the process. And delay went on 2001. Jalalita was, Jalalita's party was again won a majority in the elections and she again became chief minister. While the disproportionate asset case, 91 to 96, you are chief minister. Disproportionate asset cases began 
In 19, after she demitted office, 1997 to 2001, 2001, she is back as chief minister. Obviously, you are the prime accused and you are the chief minister of the state. Obviously, the, how can the case run? So, the DMK leader made a prayer to the Supreme Court that the case should be transferred out of Tamil Nadu. Otherwise, no justice could be done. Supreme Court accepted the argument and the case was shifted to Bangalore. That's why the matter came up to the Bangalore court. The judges, the final judgment, the trial court judgment that came was by a citizen's district judge of the Bangalore court. But soon after Jalalita was arrested, sent to jail, but like in all cases of big people, they get bail immediately. So she also got a bail and applied for appeal against the court judgment in the High Court. And in the High Court, the judgment came to the court of C.R. Kumar Swami. It's interesting. The case that started in 1996-7 for the trial court to find evidence and to come to a conclusion, it took almost 18 years. The judgment was delivered in 2014. But the High Court judge decided to dispose of the matter in six months. And what conclusions he drew? He said the plots that Jalalita Sasikala bought could not be tabulated at the market rate. They are big people, so they have influence. A lot of people would like to sell their property to them at very low delivery price. Second argument that Honorable Judge Kumar Swami made that construction cost per square meter, if it is about a thousand rupees. He said, no, because these are big people and they are extremely powerful, there are a lot of people who would like to do it even much smaller amount. So what he did? He fixed the cost per square meter 280 rupees. <coughs> By one stroke of the pen, what he did, the entire assets that she had, she, Sasikala had built, See, brought down, they brought down the cost by almost one fourth, saying the income was, so their expenditure was very little. And look at the income. Jaya Publications had announced that they, Jaya Publication, did not do anything for a commercial purpose. It was all only party material which used to be distributed. But Jaya Publications had made the claim that they had received small token denomination money from the supporters when they gave the distributed the leaflets, pamphlets, 
campaign material. Then in return, we used to give them 5 rupees, 10 rupees, 20 rupees. And by Jaya, by Jaya and, uh, and Sasikala's own admission, the payment was, the collection was 1.5 crores. But uh, uh, Justice Kumar Shami, in, in his wisdom, said that Jaya and Sasitala and the lawyer are claiming that uh, that was a mistake, 1.5 crore was just uh, a mistake, that they, they actually had got more money, and they had poor money, 4 crore they had got. So I accept their contention and I accept that is the 1.5 crore, 4 crore they got from the Jaya public. And then came about the loans. Jaya and company bought, got the loans from the banks only after the disproportionate asset charge sheet was filed. And because they had nothing to show, suddenly they started showing that they have got this loan, this loan, this loan. They started taking loans from the different banks. And this these loans, after several years, they showed it on their income tax returns. Because they had to show it because uh, in order to uh, get away, uh, uh, otherwise they will be caught in the income tax trap. So they show this. Trial court had completely rejected it saying that you had bought the property and you constructed all the buildings much before you took the loan and now you are saying you have taken the loan and so that should be added to your income it should not be accepted but the honorable high court judge sumkumar swami said no no they, they are big people so they had got some uh, uh, some support from others who had said he and Jaya had accepted that we will take the loan and they had given them money. And they are the friends and relatives who did not want to be identified. And so that that money, the loan should be legitimized. Then after this legitimation comes the bigger faux pas. What? The judge, the as per the income tax uh, filings, Jaya Sasitala show that they have taken loans worth 10.5 crore. There are from 1 crore, 75 lakhs, over 2 crore, 80 lakhs, 90 lakhs, 75 lakhs and that which works out to in a tabular form works out to 10.5 crore but our honorable judge who does not have the basic possibly basic arithmetic sense of a class 3 student adds up the whole and says so that it is 24.5 crore Actually, the, the trial court has shown it at 10 crore, but the honorable, honorable high court judge shows it 20. So suddenly showing Jalalita's income going up by 13.5 crore. And by showing this, what, the, what does he finally do? Finally, he shows that there is some amount of disproportionate asset because despite all this, he is not able to square it off. He shows it is just about 2.8 crores assets, uh, which is disproportionate. But <clears throat> he gives an example of a Supreme Court judgment in 1977, which is called Krishnanand Agnihotri case. 
in which there was a disproportionate asset case had come up and but that money was the gentleman's income that time was shown from all sources 44,000 rupees but the calculations that were made suggested that he had assets worth 55,000 rupees. So, which is just about 10, 10.3 thousand extra. That time, the Supreme Court judgment had said that in terms of his real income, this disproportionate income is just about 8% more and in absolute terms it is so less. So, this may be forgiven. All with a warning that this is not acceptable but we, he may not be sent to jail for this purpose because it was a very small disproportionate income. But our gentleman Kumar Swami cites that example and says that in this case also Madam Jailalita's disproportionate asset is less than 10% of her income so she is also set free. When it was pointed out that if you forget about all other considerations, just add up the income levels and that income levels that you would say it would come up to, it would show a gap of 13.5 crore which in itself would increase the disproportionate asset to the extent of 76 percent not 8.2 percent but unfortunately these kind of judges get away with murder and this fellow Kumar Swami gave this judgment just before his retirement It's the similar case is that of, look at that Salman Khan case, hit and run case in Salman Khan's case. The trial court found there was a personal security officer given by the government of Maharashtra because he had personal threat to his life, he claimed. Who was there, gave it on evidence on oath in front of the magistrate that how he, Salman and his friend went to a five-star hotel, were there for two hours, came back drunk, the driver was there, drive, he insisted on driving and drove extremely recklessly and run over four people. And soon after the accident, he and his friend fled from the place. This gentleman gave an oath and, and he's, a, he's a policeman. He is not an outsider. He's a policeman, personal security officer, gave it in front of the trial court. So what happens? That is also a 2002 case. The case prolongs long time and in, in between a situation, some mysterious circumstances, that same inspector dies. The trial court judge 
DW Despande meticulously puts out all the information and indicts Salman Khan. He gives him five years in jail. The matter comes to the Supreme Court and see this gentleman A.R. Josie and the justice. And what this gentleman says, this gentleman was also due to due for his retirement. He, he says, no, no, the man, policeman is dead, so his evidence is nowhere. Let's get out of it. Because he's dead, his evidence will have no value. The prosecution that saw that the how the Salman and his friend had liquor in the famous hotel and the bills had been produced. But judge accepted that this gentleman, A.R. Josi, accepted the version of Salman and his lawyers. Again, the same fellows, Kapil Sibbles and uh, Harish uh, Salve is the mercenary lawyers. What did they do? No, 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 sir. In the, in the five star, all eight pigs were drunk by his friend. He was only drinking water. <laughs> and Mr. Justice Josie accepted it. I, I accept this that uh, Salman had decided not to drink. And he is making the form uh, of duration, and I accept it. Series of attenuating circumstances in which A.R. Josie made the case and within six months set Salman free. It's a question what is in the case of the Jailalita case, of course, the Supreme Court judgment has come. Read through Supreme Court judgment and see what kind of indictment, nothing short of directly accusing a man as someone corrupt and inefficient. Supreme Court has said everything else. It shows people like Josie and people like Kumar Swami compromised this system. Compromise the system of judiciary. Inefficiency possibly can be excused. But if you are an inefficient judge, you should not be there at the upper excellence of judiciary at all. But the way they conducted themselves, and the way they presented their judgment shows there were much deeper corrupt linkages with the powers that be. It is important that in a, in a system like a democracy like ours, where executive is often corrupt, legislature is often vested with self-interest. It is the judiciary which is supposed to have a sharp eye in order to keep it in check. But unfortunately, there are, like in executive, there are quite a few extremely honest politicians who have had on important positions of power. Like in the legislature, there have been quite a few people who have always upheld the values of democratic norms. Similarly, in judiciary too, there are a lot of people, people, in fact, Dikuna and Despande are bright example. They are the pride of the institution. And there are hundreds of such people who are there, who are upholding the value of the dis dispensation of the justice system. But these Kumar Swamis and Josis are the real black sea. And they are just not one or two. This is, these are the two specific examples. There are many of them, many of these judges who 
compro deeply compromise our judicial system and quite often give judgments which favor the rich and the powerful it's important that we need to evolve a mechanism a system in which such people are taken to task it's not simply that your judgment was wrong you say and they get away with it in fact there should be a serious debate and what is important are you as students of journalism should always try and strive to put these people who are the bright shining stars always give them publicity so that they get encouragement and others also get encouragement and also courageously show this corrupt and inefficient judges their own place so that others also get the message that they cannot get away with murder this you can do as students of journalism but even as citizens of the country you need to create a larger campaign to ensure that such judges who do a hatchet job who whose judgments are virtually motivated judgments such people are also taken to task it is important that certain amount of public opinion is created so that the legislature and executive watch in the direction as there are curbs on them there should be similar curbs on the judiciary प्लीज डो नॉट टॉक प्लीज टीचर्स प्लीज इंश्योर दिस वॉट इज इंपॉर्टेंट दैट सम पीपल गेट अवे विथ मर्डर दे विल गेट अवे विथ मर्डर इफ दे आर नॉट टेकन टू टास्क take the case the example of america one rajat gupta great philanthropist one mistake he made on a one phone call he spoke to another gentleman another indian both of them live in america about certain stock decisions because of which the gentleman made a lot of profit gupta had a formidable reputation as a extremely upright man as a philanthropist but the system sent him to jail he had to spend 2 years in jail they say we cannot allow you one exception would mean other people also we look for exceptions that cannot be exceptions to be jail so what's important the important task of journalism journalists is to expose such people so that there is a fear that i because otherwise what happens large number of people educated people 
they are going about doing their job they are not bother what is happening they don't read newspapers but they don't get to learn they are educated people but they have absolutely no clue they are busy with their own work earning their own money and looking at their own family that's all but it's important but it's only when the matter is brought to greater limelight then more and more people will get to know even if they are not they will get interested at just so much has been written about what is it all about let me try and see so it's important that more and more people write about it and so that greater and greater number of people would get interested into it and this is a this is your task as journalists but greater task as citizens is to create that greater public opinion at every platform we need to ask what is how should we handle speak, speak to your legislature write letters to the various committees of parliament write letters to the president to the prime minister to to different functionary to the chief minister and so that there is an increasing pressure awareness and then for taking appropriate action certain kind of petitions of course the most important major in india if anything has happened it has happened through the route of the judiciary any major reforms that have happened through the route of judiciary but uh, i am not sure whether the appeal court will take a decision about punishing such motivated judges whose judgment look at this judgment of amitabh rai and patra dosh it in total every word of the high court judge they have dismissed and every word of the trial court they have restored validated look at this man that shows how this judge does he did he deserve to be a judge of a high court of the country he should have been a he should should have been a peer and fourth grade employee somewhere he did not deserve to be a judge of a high court at all i have no hesitation in saying such men even do not deserve a government job yeah should be moving around with the begging bowl on the street and these people enjoy adorn such important positions that's indeed unfortunate and that's why there are no magic wand you need to do work at your own level as young journalists you also need to work as consensus citizens of the country and only through a sustained and continuous campaign you will be able to achieve some results at certain point of time <coughs> judiciary when you it's not a first time that somebody is giving the name of corrupt judges prashant bhushan had given the name of eight chief justices of the supreme court and given evidence for of their corruption supreme court chose to do it take no action on the matter but in case of justice canon this is a you make some charges against your brother judges and against your superior judges against your chief justice you see every institution has to run with a certain degree of discipline if you had an issue with the chief justice you could have written it to the supreme court and 
the decision of the Supreme Court you have to accept. If you do not accept, then you do not remain part of the system because that's how system functions. But he chose to be defined there. And that is the reason why first time in the history Supreme Court issued a so cause. And now he has also become defined, he has refused to appear before the court itself. So, what will happen? Most possibly, the Supreme Court will take action against him, will move, will move for his dismissal <coughs> from the court. So it's a question of a greater, but it could be an issue that he is raising that because I am a Dalit, there are I have been discriminated against. That could be a lot of lot of logic in his argument. That could be it could be possible that he is actually making a right statement. But if not simply making a right statement, you have to also move in the right direction. That's important when you are part of a system. That is where he went from. RTI is a major part of it. RTI and we to it even in Supreme Court. So even that the, the whole argument which I made in the last lecture that the RTI, even the Supreme Center judiciary should be subject to RTI. Political bodies should be subject to RTI. That will go a major way in mitigating the issue of corruption to a large extent. Because you will get the information, it's, it's a huge instrument which we have not been able to use it in a big way. Only a handful of people are using it in a big way. And But when larger number of people would do it, especially journalists would do it, that would be something where the politicians, the bureaucrats, the judges, everyone will dread that thing. Sir, my question is that in Nyalan, many people are limited. In many cases, the people who are in the past are not able to do it. That's why Nyalan is a lot of trouble. Did you say that there is a lack of legal justice in the law? Or is there a lack of legal justice in the law? What is the lack of legal justice in the law? What is the lack of legal justice in the law? जिसके कारण हमारे समाज में जो है न्याय न्याय व्यवस्था को लेकर लोगों का विश्वास जो है हटता जा रहा है न्याय में क्योंकि ये आई आंसर ये एक इश्यू है कि क्यों कोर्ट का केस जो है ठीक है ये तो जयललिता जी का केस है तो सोलह साल या अठारह साल चला बट कोई भी बाकी केसेस हैं दस साल बारह साल पंद्रह साल चलता है जब तक इन पर एक्यूज मर जाता है अभी कल देखिए ग्यारह साल जेल में रहने के बाद उनको एक्विटल मिल रहा है पढ़ा है मैंने इलेवन इयर्स यू आर पुटिंग इन जेल एंड उसके बाद यू आर एक्विटेड हिम ही शुड गेट द लाइफ टाइम कॉम्पेंसेशन मैंने इवन इफ यू गिव हिम टेन क्रोर कॉम्पेंसेशन दैट्स नॉट एनफ बिकॉज आपने ग्यारह साल उसके जिंदगी खराब कर दिया but he compensation to nahi de deta hai hamara system and 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 uh, ye 11 saal ko kharab kar deta hai we say completely it's a violence against human being and he is ke khilaf jo what is the process why is it that in america america mein to cases bahut jyada hote hain क्योंकि हर चीज में अब अभी जा रहे हैं स्लिप कर गया मेरा पैर तो मैंने केस कर दिया आपने इसको अच्छे से मेंटेन नहीं किया है तो मुझे इसके लिए मेंटेनेंस कर दीजिए मेरा ये ये हो रहा तो पांच हजार डॉलर लगा तो अब लेकिन मेंटल मेंटल टेंशन हुआ तो पांच लाख डॉलर आप पेमेंट कर ये यस दे डू दैट इन अमेरिका दैट्स वाई एवरी वन इज सो केयरफुल दैट एक केस जाएगा एंड दैट्स द रीजन वाई द मोमेंट ए केस गोज वो जाके आउट ऑफ कोर्ट सेटलमेंट करते हैं भाई आप इतना पैसा ले लो चुप केस टू इट करो बिकॉज कोर्ट आर वेरी वेरी स्ट्रिक्ट इन गिविंग स्ट्रॉन्ग कॉम्पेंसेशन इफ यू डू नॉट मेंटेन सिस्टम वेल यू गेट कॉम्पेंसेशन बट द प्रॉब्लम इज हमारे यहां वो सिस्टम नहीं बट द मेन कल्प्रिक जो बार बार ये कहा गया है द क्वेश्चन ऑफ एडजर्नमेंट ऑफ केसेस 
चीज को क्यों बार बार आर्जन करना है आपको डे टू डे बाई देखिए जब डिसीजन लेने का होता है तीन महीने में आप डिसीजन ले लेते हैं दो महीने में डिसीजन ले लेते हैं डे टू डे आप उसके केस के केस के फर्स्ट ट्रैक कोर्ट में आप उसको केसेस को देखते हैं एंड केसेस को डिस्पोज ऑफ कर सकते हैं लेकिन हमारे यहां दो चीजें एक तो हर कोर्ट जज के पास बहुत सारे केसेस है पचास साठ केसेस जिसमें से 30-40 केसेस को खाली डिस्पोज ऑफ फॉर एन अदर डेट कर देता है क्योंकि उसके पास समय नहीं है और दूसरा ये जो आज मेरा कोई वकील बोलेगा मेरा पेट में दर्द है इसलिए मैं नहीं आ पाऊंगा कोई आके बोलेगा कि मेरे घर में शादी है मैं जा रहा हूं तो मैं इसलिए तो नहीं हो पाऊंगा एंड दर्जन ऑस्ट्रेलिया इज ए क्लासिक एग्जाम्पल वेर नो एडजमेंट आर गिवन ऑन द डे नी सर्कमस्टांस and that is the reason why what is happening that there all cases are fought on a day to day basis and they are decision it comes quite soon so two things necessary do cheezo ki zarurat hai ek hamare number of courts ko to badhana hoga because hamare jo proportion hai hamare proportion 1 is to 100 hai compared to australia and america in terms of our judges strength to so, itne kam strength mein unko kaam karna to obviously mushkil hoga ek hai ki judges ka sankhya judge the court ka sankhya badhana hoga dusra hamara procedure to adjustment ko strictly ban karna hoga there will be no question of any adjustment और तीसरा वी नीड टू ब्रिंग इन टेक्नोलॉजी सो दैट द डुप्लीकेशन ऑफ एफर्ट डिफेंस क्या बोल रहा है बैठे जज का ये लिख रहे हैं प्रोसिक्यूशन क्या कर रहा है उसको फिर लिख रहे हैं फिर वो लिख करके ला करके जज साहब के पास देखें जज साहब देखेंगे बोलेंगे कि नहीं ये ऐसा नहीं था वो ऐसा नहीं था क्योंकि उनका आईक्यू तो ऑब्वियसली छोटा लेवल का हो रहा है वो तो थोड़ा ये बना देगा सो जज वुड ट्राई टू मेक चेंजेस एंड इन दिस प्रोसेस व्हाट इज हैपेंड इन अमेरिकन एंड ऑस्ट्रेलियन कोर्स एवरीथिंग इज ऑन द कैमरा एवरीथिंग टेक्नोलॉजिकली इन द मोमेंट प्रोसिक्यूशन सेज एनीथिंग दैट नॉट ओनली गेट्स रिकॉर्डेड दैट ऑटोमेटिकली गेट्स टाइप्ड आउट इनटू द सिस्टम्स डिपोजिशन फॉर्म you do not spend any time at all on this purpose and that's why the court proceedings become very fast so you this three things you need to do right away one increase the number of courts improve the technology technological base for the court functioning and third change the procedures stop adjournments do three things and in judiciary would deliver fast verdicts